Hi there guys, I was tagged by a friend on YouTube some time ago to do a kit review of the current gear I'm carrying. Admittedly it was a spring video and it's way past spring now but the gear really hasn't changed that much since spring but it has changed a lot since the last video in September 2013 so I thought it'd be a good opportunity today to do a video just covering the current gear that I carry when I'm out practicing bushcraft. I've had to make myself a little fire. There's mosquitoes everywhere and they're homing in on me as we speak. Really it's only my arms and my head that are exposed so I generally get a glimpse at them before they get me or I hear them but it just helps to have a, a little fire going with some damp wood. This is the pack that I currently use and it's called the Maxpedition Condor 2 and the colour's foliage green. Although I've made a number of modifications to it and added some additional pouches and straps. I have covered this pack in detail on a video entitled Maxpedition Condor 2 so if you are interested specifically in the pack and want to know all about it, you can have a look at that video because I'm only going to cover it briefly today. If we have a look at the pack face on, you can see some minor changes to the original Condor 2. We've obviously got the flap, which I'll talk about in the other video, and the notebook holder just on the bottom there of the flap. So you can obviously put some wild edibles guides or various other notebook things in, and pen and paper if you want to do some jotting when you're outdoors. You've got a top utility pocket and a lower one. And you can see that both sides are mirrored. We've got two cocoon pouches left and right, and two Janus pouches left and right, as well as dump pouches that hang off these little utility straps there, and they can unclip and go on my belt kit, and I'll show you all that later. On the right shoulder strap of the pack, I carry a whistle, and whistles are quite essential items, really. It really does help in signalling someone down or calling out to a friend who might be a distance away, getting his attention, or if you have an accident or something, no matter how far away from home you are, you might be able to call out and get some assistance. On the right hand side of the pack, I have a small med kit in this Janus pouch, and this is detachable and it can come off and go on the side of my belt kit if I want to attach it there. But it's just a small med kit for me really, and uh, I've put orange zipper pulls on it just to make it a little bit different if somebody else needs to access it. And I do have a one pipe bandage in there just in case things really go wrong. In this cocoon pouch here, I keep a rain cover for the pack. And this is about a 35 to 40 litre rain cover, so when I've got a sleeping bag on the bottom of the pack, it generally fits quite well, although the sleeping bag or wool blanket that I would carry we'd go inside a dry bag because the weather in this country is generally pretty damp. I've got another Janus pouch on the side here. Well, I generally put cartridges in or various other bits and bobs, anything goes. It's just a utility pouch on the outside that you can put anything in and access very quickly. So that's just a brief look at the pack from the outside and the items that live on it. If you want to look into it a bit more, as I say, I do have that other video, it covers it in a lot more detail, but this video is more about the content, so we'll have a look inside. So if we lift up this top flap, as I discussed, you've got a compartment there and a pouch there. We've got this little pocket here, and inside this pocket, I just keep a leather pouch. I've had this leather pouch for some time, it's just made out of the cushion of an old sofa. And it's really an optional pouch, I don't always take it with me, but I just put tinder in it. I have some fat wood there, which is quite useful stuff, especially when you're in damp conditions. A smaller version of the pouch with some shavings of birch bark in. Again, quite useful for damp conditions. Usually use the two together at the moment. I have a ferrocerium rod. It's quite a nice one there. It's the main one I use. A piece of flint, which is quite useful. You know, you can strike the ferrocerium rod with it. It's pretty useful. And also strike some high carbon steel with it and create a spark and a piece of leather which is pretty useful for putting on your knee if you're working, if you're making cordage, if you're maintaining items with various oils or fats on your leg for example. You don't want it going on your trousers but also pretty useful for friction fire, putting on damp ground. Just quite a useful piece of uh, material to have on you and the pouch itself can come in handy for many things as well. The content of the top pouch isn't just dedicated to those items there. As I say, they're optional and they don't always come with me because there's plenty of natural materials around and tinders that you can use just on the day, and especially with a ferro rod, you know, your chances of making a fire are pretty high. It's quite a nice sustainable item to have on you. But other things can go in there, like if I don't take this, I usually put food, that can go in the main pocket. It's all very interchangeable, it's not just kind of like a set format. It's just a pack really, and you're just putting in the things you want to take with you. Another item that I usually drop in the top there when I'm storing the pack away, is this knife here. 
and I usually wear this around my neck most of the time. So this is the smallest knife I carry and it's a full tang fixed blade knife, about a three inch blade on it. It's the Essie Azula 2 and it's 1095 carbon steel, sharpens very well, great edge retention and I've ground it down to about 23 degrees either side. So it's not too bad and it holds the edge for quite some time, it's not too fine. I've also ground down a 90 degree angle there, um, just so I can scrape fair rods and all manner of things like fat wood, bark off of trees, anything really. It's just a 90 degree angle that's useful for scraping. But it's got full length um, scales on it, unlike the Azula, which is the predecessor of this. And you can see you can get a good grip on it for a small knife, it's very useful. Bit of a void there for me on my hand. Um, provided you grip it quite tightly it doesn't move too well and you can always use your thumb on the back of the jimping if you want to do some intricate carving work so it's a very useful knife and it's served me pretty well so far discarding that top compartment now, you just undo this larger one at the bottom you'll see it's not even taken up really with the stuff I've got in it I've got quite a nice spoon that I carved the other day I've got a lid and I've got my canteen and cooking kit just here. So this is just my main cook kit here. I've got a hazel spoon that I just knocked up the other day. I don't make too many spoons, but when I need one every now and then, or well, they get broken, I, I make a new one. And I've got my containers just here. I'll talk about the pot in a sec. But this is a Geit Design stainless steel 32 ounce water bottle. And um, they're very, very useful items. You can see this one's quite well used and after a while, you kind of get this layer on the outside that almost protects it from soot and allows fresh stuff to just be scoured off very quickly so they can become easy to clean once primed almost like a pan but it has a lid that seals on with a lanyard on it and you can take the lanyard off and I've added this stainless steel cord here this wire and it can just be hung over a fire and you can sterilize water in it so this mug here is the Vargo 750 milliliter titanium mug and uh, it's a very good mug actually, quite thick and strong, but very light at the same time, which is one of the pluses of titanium. And um, I've got on with this one very, very well. It's actually withstood quite a lot of abuse in terms of me accidentally kind of crushing it. And it's, it's taken quite a bit of a beating and um, I'm really impressed with it. Some of them can be really thin, the titanium products, and I'm usually a bit wary of them just because I don't want them to kind of get broken or crushed. And, they lose a little bit of longevity, but this one's really good. And I've done the same mod as I've done with the Geit Designs bottle. So you can just hang it over a fire with a pot hanger, cook your oats, cook your rice, make some tea, sterilize water, and obviously eat out of the thing as well using your spoon. And it comes with a lid so you can keep that heat in too. One optional item I do carry with me sometimes is this titanium plate, which I've primed and used for quite some time. You may have seen it on other videos as I use it as a frying pan by making a hazel staff just there as a handle and it's very useful but uh, also good as a plate but it doesn't always come with me. I have been asked on a number of occasions to do a video showing how you can make this mod um, and one will be following pretty shortly after this video on how you can do it. So I've got this little pouch here and it's got a number of different things inside it. Before I open this leather pouch up this is a little maintenance kit um, I just wanted to take a moment to thank somebody out there. I received a gift in the post not too long ago. I've been away actually in Germany for a little while and I've, I just got back recently and this box was waiting for me. And I completely forgot and went and opened it up and I just sat there staring at it all for about 20 minutes. Just primitive fishing kit, you know, all handcrafted stuff, bone needles, um, containers, leather pouches. Um, you know, natural cordage, just tons of natural items that he made me, even a, a survival fishing kit and he inspired me to make my own which I'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, just really incredible bushcraft items that I'm going to hang on to forever and, and show people when I go away and stuff and go to work and I'm sure they'll be, be really taken back by it all. So Jason, thank you very much for all of that. I, I don't know how to thank you for it. Um, hopefully I can gather some things together like you've asked for and, and send them over and that'll make up for it I'm pretty sure it won't but yeah thank you again really appreciate it and obviously you probably recognize this here which I'll go into now so I've got a small leather pouch here and as I said this was a maintenance kit and if we open it up I've got a number of different items in there I've got some fat in a metal tin it's wrapped in leather simply because um, 
when you're playing around with fat and you're greasing up all your items and stuff, you can get it all over your fingers and you can just then wipe it on the leather on the outside. But this is pig fat. I use goose fat and duck fat as well, just whatever I can get my hands on, but I've got quite a lot of um, sort of rendered pig fat at the moment in the fridge, so I just add it into here when I need it and take it out. And this is great for cooking, you can eat it, you can sort of waterproof your items with it, like put it on your knife, use it on leather work, use it on the shotgun sometimes, and obviously, you know, fat does eventually go rancid, but just to give you an idea, this has been in here for, for six months, hasn't gone off yet, and it generally has a shelf life out the fridge of about a year. So really useful stuff that you can get yourself while you're out. I've got this stone in here also. And this is a beach stone that I picked up not too long ago. And I ended up getting two different grades of stone off the beach, a really coarse one and this one was a really hard fine one. And just spent ages rubbing them together and even got a friend of mine to carry on when I got tired. And um, eventually it just flattens them off and they become incredibly flat and fine and I've never put such a good edge on my blades as I have with this stone here it really puts an incredible edge on on the blades that I've got on the 1095 knives and even on the axe as well and um, I've decided to hang on to it and that piece of leather I showed you earlier in the tinder pouch you can lie that on a surface pop the stone on it and it actually grips it and then you can just kind of brush your knife across it and put a good edge back on your blades although it doesn't take much once they're sharp just a few glides across and you're back to a razor's edge. I have another little pouch in here, I have a few other items in there, some natural corn, quite a lot of it, great for making fires as well so it's multifunctional. I have some very strong thread and a couple of needles, very useful for modifying gear or repairing it, so useful stuff. And some beeswax which is really useful stuff as well, great for all manner of things, I use it quite a lot on friction fire on the cord, um, simply because it gives it a bit of grip and keeps moisture out, but useful for many, many different things. I have another small pouch here, and I have some um, fishing floats, and these are obviously made for me as well, came part of the kit, you know, things just get snagged very quickly, so to have some spares at hand is quite useful, but to make your own, easy too, which is uh, the great thing about this kind of kit. I've also got some gloves in here, these are 511 tactical gloves and uh, they're really useful, tough gloves, not that expensive either, gloves can cost an awful lot and I think I got these on eBay for about £16, um, I'm not sure whether they were used or not second hand but it seems pretty cheap for this kind of quality of glove but these have lasted me a long time, lost them for a while but got them back the other day and um, yeah really good. So this is the main hatchet that I use and really the only one that I own and this is a Granfus Brooks wildlife hatchet. It's a fantastic hatchet and I've had it for a couple of years and really put it through its paces. I've treated it pretty badly, given it jobs to do which are far too big for it and it's held up absolutely perfectly. It's solid as a rock and uh, I have no doubt in it at all, complete faith in this tool. Brilliant bit of kit which is good to know, you know it's hard to find products to trust these days when people manufacture things to be destroyed and so you'll need to buy another one. But with products like this, they really are built to last and that's what you really want in bushcraft and self-reliance, things that are gonna last the ages and can be maintained. But they're hand forged and you can see the initials of the blacksmith just there. If we uh, have a look at this sheath, you'll see it's not the original one, it's actually made by an aftermarket company. Um, somebody borrowed this and put it into a log and cut straight through the sheath on mine, the original one, so I had to buy another. Um, but with these aftermarket sheaths, because these axes are hand forged, they're all different shapes and sizes, so when you buy a sheath it might not fit first time round, so soak it in water and then fit it on, and um, stretch this buckle round and clip it there, and it'll then stretch and be absolutely fine. I've put a leather shoulder on mine and just stitched it on, so you can see there I've used some really thick boot leather. And that just protects the shoulder of the axe if I give it jobs to do that are too big instead of chipping into the hickory and um, also just uh, gives you a bit of grip when you're doing carving work. But if you're looking for a hatchet to fit in the Condor 2 along the bottom of the pack or up either side then this is the one for you. Great lightweight axe and uh, a very reliable tool. Highly recommend it if you're looking for one. So in the main compartment there I've got my knife and usually sits on my belt but obviously given the regulations in the country I live in I can't just carry a six inch knife on my hip 
Uh, three inch, yeah, not so bad, but a big one like this is going to have to go in the pack until I'm off the beaten track. So this is the primary knife that I use along with the sort of sheath combo there, various items on that I can grab at hand. If you are interested specifically in this modification and you know the paracord wrap and you know the mole back and everything else, um, I've done a video specifically on all of this, so I won't cover it in too much detail in this video. But if we have a look at the knife, this is the SE6 and um, it's quite a large blade, about six inches, and it has a choil just there, so you can tuck up a little bit, but really there's specifically the choils for actually being able to sharpen all of the edge rather than put your finger in like that, but it does really help um, on popping your thumb on the back and tucking up a bit more if you feel like the work you're doing needs a little bit more of a, a finer touch, but it's generally why you carry a smaller knife at the end of the day. Um, but this knife has been a fantastic companion and um, they coat all their knives, they're 1095 carbon steel, very high quality steel, although quite a simple old technology really these days compared to some of the knives that are out there. But it's a fantastic blade and um, I generally put a 23 degree edge either side on this knife and it usually has great edge retention but also a very fine cutting edge. And I use this stone to put the edge on it and uh, this is a brilliant stone, I'll show you. This is without stropping as well. So lots of hair, you know, just comes straight off. Very, very sharp knife. So just with a beach stone found on the coast, you can put a fantastic edge on it as long as you spend enough time preparing that beach stone. And the bigger one I've got that I sort of ground against it's at home at like a sort of bench set, for example, for when I'm doing maintenance at home. But yeah, this is a great knife and it's, it's served me really well. And, I've had no thoughts really about changing it so far. I had an old Maxpedition mini dump pouch, a little mini roly-poly pouch, and it fell apart. So I decided to take the top flap on it and just wrap it round as sort of an extra security tag for this component here. But it also allows me to strap my torch on a little bit more securely as well, and uh, just keeps this pouch absolutely strapped on a little bit better too. But I have a sort of belt loop that that kind of locks through and then the flap goes around and just keeps it nice and secure on my belt loop and uh, it's a nice little setup and you can just tuck that tag underneath there and um, tuck it away but if we undo that and you have a look on the other side you'll see a small compartment there and uh, this little compartment came off of the inside of um, one of the little Maxpedition pouches you get. I think it's the barnacle pouch because I just found it was taking up too much room inside the pouch and I didn't really want it in there. And I just keep some six twist brass wire there, uh, which is really useful stuff. As I'm sure a lot of you know what you can really use that kind of thing for. Um, also got my LD22 and a lanyard that wraps all the way around like that. Um, just allows it to pop off. And this is a brilliant torch, I've really needed no other, and it's the only torch I own apart from one in the car, just in case like I have a breakdown, I need to do some work or signal somebody down or whatever, and it's night time. But that can just wrap all the way around underneath the pouch and just go around the top of itself and it just adds a little bit of security. And this strap here can strap around and just kind of fit on like that and it makes for quite a good setup. I also keep a ferro rod just here, and this is a very thick ferro rod. Um, it's one I made myself. I just bought the rod and drilled into a piece of antler and mounted it in. It's just as a low profile one that sits on the side, but it also gives me something to grab onto when I'm using it. But this is a much harder composite than the one I keep in my tinder pouch. And they can almost come in handy for different things. Like with this one, you can scrape down it pretty hard for a great length of time and build up a little pile and then just your final strike, ignite that pile, burns for a considerable amount of time, so lighting candles and fatwood and various other tinders that might not be behaving themselves on the day um, can be useful, and it's just useful to have a spare as well, because you can lose them. But in here, I keep a head strap. Uh, this is for the torch, and it just means that you can use the torch hands-free, just Velcros in, goes around your head or around your cap or around whatever you're hanging it from, and you can just use a hands-free torch set then, which is great for going out shooting, if you're lamping rabbits, or just if you're working in the dark, or whatever you're doing. Useful bit of kit. So also what I've got in here is a buff, which doubles up as a hat and a scarf, very warm, but also just a bushcraft fishing kit, which I've made the other day, an inspiration from Jason's fishing kit that he sent me. 
So I made this um, not too long ago and I've tried it out and it's a fantastic little kit actually. Casts like a dream. Got some uh, non-toxic weights on there, these aren't the lead ones, these are the newer ones you get these days. Um, but they work just fine, they cast really well and they're not quite as soft and cling quite nicely. Got a number 16 micro barbed hook on there, some 8 pound line. And this little container at the back here, this piece of wood you can see just twisted off. I just added some felt and waxed it so it kind of screws on even tighter. It doesn't just pop off and you lose all your kit. But this was given to me as part of the kit by um, by Jason's as part of that gift and um, I decided to incorporate it in part of the hobo fishing kit and drilled a hole through the bottom of it and simply put a bolt straight through this piece of beach I found. Put a stop cut with the Azula, just pushed it in and cut out like a, a sort of narrower portion there to put all the eight pound line around and you know it casts really well, it's a nice fishing kit. But as far as what I've got on it, I've just put a lanyard in case you know you lose it, you don't want it just coming out of your hands and strapped a thick boot leather handle on just so you can hold it and get a bit of a grip and obviously do your reeling in if you need to. But in terms of what I've got on the inside, I've just got a fake bit of bait there with a hook through it, I found that very useful in coastal fishing. I've got an eyelet, um, you know you can just screw that into a piece of willow or a piece of hazel and you know make your own rod if you really need to. Very useful little thing to carry around. Also good for getting this out. I've got some felt in here and this has all my hooks on. You can see I've got some number 16 micro barbed hooks, one with fake bait on if times get hard and um, yeah also some sort of coastal fishing hooks as well. I've got some fairly large barbs on. So I've got a good selection of hooks and I've got a whole dozen of these weights here that I can use as well because they tend to disappear quite quickly if you don't put them on right. In the zipper pocket at the top there, keep a catapult or slingshot. And that's another item that I use for, for hunting small game, something I'm you know quite keen about, slingshot hunting. I've got quite a few video well, I've got a few videos on it on the channel and also aiming methods if you are interested, but I'll just run through the slingshot I use. So I've made this little leather pouch to keep the catapult or slingshot in and just sort of threaded a grimlock through the back and it just means that I can um, unclip that just like this and whack it onto my belt and obviously put all my ammunition in there and you know have the slingshot in there and just walk around just have something on me that I can use in case I get an opportunity because that's generally when things present themselves you're going along and you're unprepared and you see something you think you know that never happens when I'm out hunting yet there it is right in front of me so it's good to be able to have something at reach to take those opportunities with and then you, know, you get yourself something to eat um, that isn't off the shelf, but the slingshot that I use, and I, as I say I do have some vids on it, is the Bill Hayes Target Sniper, and uh, it's a fantastic bit of kit. Bill hand makes these over in the States, and they've got a steel frame in them, they're really robust, and they take about two weeks to get to you, and yeah, really great bit of kit actually. Completely turned around my aiming technique getting this, I used to shoot intuitive just off the bat, which is which is good, but it's not always consistent, but now um, sort of Bill does quite a few videos on it. Um, you know, you can do a drop aim, just like, like you aim a rifle, and just drop your head into it. And it's a fantastic way of getting consistent accuracy on targets, and even game if they stand still long enough. And I've taken quite a few squirrels, and even pheasant when the shot's been good enough across the neck or head, because they're very well armoured. Wood pigeon as well, and uh, not had any rabbit with this so far, but it's obviously on the cards if the opportunity presents itself. So a great way of reaching out and touching something from a distance. I don't always take the um, the slingshot with me when I go out. I mean, sometimes I um, go out shooting for a little while and I do some camping while I'm out there. And, uh, you know, I can take a 12 ball with me, a 12 ball shotgun or the 410. Got a nice folding hammer action 410 shotgun that folds down about this big. And, um, you know, really great just for going out ammunition's very light. have an air rifle as well, again ammunition is very very light, a very sustainable bit of equipment for hunting small game and much more accurate than the slingshot. But it's nice to have something in your pack when you're in areas where you can't use those kind of tools to kind of acquire game with and you just come across an opportunity like I did yesterday, went out for a walk, just, just literally for a, a little wander, looking for some cramp balls, some tinder, um, you know, and just had the slingshot on me and there was just this little squirrel 
just managed to get a shot off of it, but it was just under and, you know, it's just opportunities like that that you don't always come across. So you can't always be at the ready, but it's nice to have something that gives you those options when you have them. So really the last thing I've got in here is a bit of a cover. So my pre-strung tarp. So I really always carry a tarp on me, even when I'm just out for the day and I'm making videos like this because the weather was amazing this morning. We had clear skies, beautiful sunny day, and now it's becoming overcast and clouds are starting to form and it's probably gonna rain a bit later. So when you're out doing this sort of thing in the UK, like the weather changes at the drop of a hat and um, you know, it's good to have something on you to keep you dry. But it's a three by three DD tarp and um, it's very, very useful. Polyurethane, I um, used it in a lot of my videos, if you've seen, um, had fires underneath it, obviously controlled fires using different types of woods. But one thing I keep inside of this is a little dry bag. And I use this dry bag for a number of different things. When I'm packed and I'm going out somewhere and I need clothing, because I'm there for more than one or two nights. Um, my clothing usually goes in here. I've got some wicker layer, sort of undergarments and stuff, under underwear and t-shirt and socks and things and um, they can all just pack in here very very compressed and just go in the bottom of the pack with the tarp and um, you can rotate that clothing very easily if you're out for prolonged amounts of time just by washing your underlayer and keeping the stuff on top um, pretty clean in that case so it does really help just to have a change of clothes and to wash them if you have a water source available to you but another good thing to have this um, little dry bag for is if I'm out in soaking wet weather and it's been pissing it down and I've got to go home I can chuck the tarp in the dry bag and um, just pop it in the bottom of the pack and it doesn't soak all the rest of my gear and I don't have to then dry out the inside of the pack, for example. I'm just going to touch briefly on the belt kit that I use and, and it really isn't very complex. Um, I think you know it looks a bit more complicated than it really is, but here it is around my waist just here and um, I'll give you a bit of a close up of that. It's basically just two inch foliage green webbing um, with some Maxpedition buckles on and some adjustment straps to keep it taut and all that really came off of the um, Janus pouches because they come with a couple of buckles and you can just take them off if you're using them as side packs like this and pop them on a bit of uh, foliage green webbing that you can buy on eBay from the States very cheap stuff you can get meters of it but you can also get these Maxpedition tack ties and Maxpedition tack ties um, are sort of you know what Maxpedition advertise for attaching pouches to your kit they're not that effective and I've used them for other things and you can see on my belt kit here that I've got a piece of leather threaded through two tack ties and what I can do is just take my axe and just pop my axe down like that and it just sits on the side of my webbing there on my belt kit and uh, just means I can carry my axe about. The same thing with the saw, I can obviously thread the saw through my belt loop and when I get it back I will do that. Um, sometimes I use this compartment on these four raven trousers because you can actually fit the uh, Laplander saw just in here and just keep it on you and button it up and I do prefer that than having tons of stuff around my waist that isn't necessary but as well as the knife sheath as well we talked about this sort of um, compartment that I've made out of the uh, dump pouch you can just take that strap off there and I keep the other part of the mole sheath just on here and you can just thread it through, velcro it up and then secure it with that piece of strapping just like that and that can sit quite comfortably just on your belt there so you can have some essential items on you and obviously the medical kit clips on the back like I showed you earlier um, you know and you can be fairly comfortable so this is really my kit in its entirety and I imagine it will change even after this video it's always changing because you're always using it and you're always finding things that don't work quite right or something just changes, your, your mentality switches and that's really just how the development of gear goes but you'll probably notice that there is something missing here and that's my saw, my Baco Laplander I do have a sheath for it, just here, uh, waiting for it for whenever I find it uh, but I don't know where it's gone, I, I can't find it anywhere I think I left it at work or I left it somewhere while I was out um, all else fails, they're not that expensive and I probably will buy another one or, or look at an alternative as well so it gives me the opportunity to do that. So in terms of sleeping gear you can see that on the base of the pack there you have some eyelets and I have some straps inside with buckles on. I only thread them through when I need them or else they're on damp ground a lot and they just end up soaking up a lot of water. But there's the underside of this pack here 
you know, is water resistant, so it makes sense just to keep them off unless I need them. Um, but for a sleeping system, I used to have a Snug Pack Softy 4, and I had it for four years, and it's just not a very good bag, to be honest, in my opinion. Some of you out there might, might have a, a different opinion, fair enough, it's, it's just my opinion at the end of the day. It might just be my experiences with it or the bag I have. Um, but, you know, the, it says minus 10 comfort, and it's, it's nowhere near that. It's actually nowhere near that. I've been cold on nights that are just way warmer than that, even at this time of year in that bag. So either mine's just really old and battered and it needs to be gotten rid of. I've actually put it in the back of the Jeep, so I've got a sleeping bag in the back of the Jeep um, in case I you know, have an argument with the missus and I've got to get out of there. Got a bug out. <laughs> um, you know, I've got something in the car that I can sleep in. Um, but yeah, I've actually been using a wool blanket. I went to a charity shop and I found this wool blanket and it was really long and uh, I bought it for 40 quid and it's 100% wool, it's about that thick, really thick, quite coarse though. Um, and I stitched it in like an L, so I've made a sleeping bag out of it because I prefer that on the wool blankets than getting in it in a diamond and doing the fold over. I, it's just my personal preference at the end of the day. I appreciate one's warmer than the other, but I was looking at it for a summer bag and I spent some nights sleeping um, you know, on the side of a river down by the Y, under the stars, no cover. Really lovely weather, kind of like this, not going to rain, hopefully, but it's starting to cloud over. And I was really warm, slept through the night, had a great night. I just lay out some uh, spruce boughs on the ground and other foliage and stuff and, you know, slept straight on it, just on the wall blanket. Um, great water suspension, no dew, no build-up of moisture. I had a really comfortable night and I'm sure that's great for the summer, but for the winter, um, I'm going to have to look at something else. So the sleeping system is still kind of in development which is why I've not shown it today, um, because it's not a complete system that really works for me at the moment. It's just something I'm making do with until I can refine it a bit better. But thanks again for watching, and um, I appreciate you know you watching the channel and you know all the subscriptions and stuff. And you know, I haven't been around for a little while as I've been on holiday, but you know back now, so I'll be putting videos up regularly again. And I've added quite a lot to the website as well, and also added a section to the website about regulations and law. Um, as I've been asked a number of questions about uh, knife law and hunting and shooting and all these different things in the UK or the British Isles and even for people who are abroad or interested as well of what it's like over here um, you know you can have a look at that section on the website and uh, get some ideas about you know what you can and can't do but thanks again for watching and uh, I hopefully I'll see you in the next video thanks again guys bye